amongst four named to the Baseball Hall of Fame today, the right-handed great Mike Messina, who joins us now on the phone. Mike, first of all, congratulations. I know you've had a very busy day, including coaching your high school basketball teams. Tell us about what happened, and were there any nerves in waiting for that phone call? And then what happened after the phone call? Well, um, no, there wasn't really any nerves. I mean, this is my sixth year on the ballot, and, and uh, you know, I knew, I knew jumping from 63 or whatever it was last year, up over 75 was going to be a big jump, and I knew I'd been doing okay. And but you never know when the when the private the votes that aren't publicized come in. You never know where you're going to be. So I thought it was going to be close. Um, and we had practice. We had practice after school, and and uh, we were just finishing up because there was a girls' game coming in behind us. And and uh, you know, my phone rang, and I had it in my pocket because I knew if they were going to call, they were going to call about the time practice was closing out. So. Uh, I had to take the call and leave the leave the gym so that so that I could get some place where nobody could hear me because of course they don't want me to tell anybody until it's on television, and so I ran ran and hid and and uh, came back and had to make up some some bunch of crap and told my son <laughs> look we got to go so that's how it ended and out the door we went. Hey, Mike, first of all, congratulations. And earlier I was telling a story about how you would go to the bullpen before your starts and you would figure out what type of stuff you had that day, and then you would tell the catcher how you were going to get that lineup out on that particular night. Did you have that from day one, or did you learn that along the way? No, I, th I think that's something I kind of learned. I, th I think when you're young, you know, you just want to impress from the very first time you're out there, and you want it to be the, the best stuff that you've ever had every single time and and you, you you learn quickly that it's not going to be that way when you're throwing every fifth day and and uh so i, I kind of learned that well listen I, if this was the game plan what if i don't have the breaking ball that day or what if i don't have good location that day or, or so let's go to the pen and let's get ready for the game and figure out what works the best and then when we get to the game see if the same stuff carried over from the pen and if it did, we're going with it. And if it didn't, we've got to figure something else out because, you know, they're counting on me to get to the latter part of this game. I'm not going to bail out because I'm going to say, well, my stuff wasn't good that day. So I just try to do my job and, and figure something out and stay in there as long as I could. Mike, I'm sure you've got a lot swirling around in your head right now, but you had 10 years and 147 wins with the Orioles, eight years, 123 wins with the Yankees. How much thought have you given to what cap you would like to have on your plaque in Cooperstown? Uh, um, I, I got to be honest. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be on this call with you guys if it wasn't for both organizations. So uh, to, I, I, I won't be able to choose how that's going to be. I mean, I, I started my career in Baltimore, and had and had 10 seasons and, and and had some success there and I went to New York and had eight more seasons and had some success there and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to, to to do this without without one place or the other so I, I mean I, I I'm proud of playing for both organizations I'm, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to play for both organizations but I couldn't sit here and choose one over the other